Okay guys, so last thing for this video is going to be probability. Um, there's two types of probability. You have you know, your kind of standard probability and then you also will look at geometric probability. We're not going to worry about geometric probability until we actually get into the plane geometry video. But for now, uh, let's just define probability. So your probability is going to be equal to um, the number of desired outcomes over your total number of outcomes. So a kind of classic example is marbles in a bag. Uh, so if you had something like uh, you have marbles in a bag, six are red, two are blue, let's be patriotic, and ten are white. Um, and what is the probability of getting a blue marble, for instance? Then you would take your two blue, because that's your desired, over the total. So then you would add 10 plus 6 plus 2. So you'd have two blue marbles for every 18 total marbles. Or you could say 1 9 is the probability of getting the marble that you want. Okay, so that's probability, basic probability. The next thing to know about it is what to do when you have separate events happening, uh, either at the same time or one after the other. So there's two kinds of events. You have dependent and independent events. Okay, so dependent events, name sounds pretty logical. They depend on one another. So without replacement, um, that's going to always tell you it's a dependent event. So for instance, if I take a blue marble out and then a white marble without replacing them, the total number of marbles is going to get smaller because I already took away the blue marble. And then the next type is independent events, so they're completely not related, so with replacement will be a good indicator of that. So if I took out a blue marble, put it back, and then I took out a white marble, it's as if I didn't take out a blue marble in the beginning anyway because I already replaced it. In either case, however, if you're looking at two separate events, you're going to multiply your probabilities together to tell you what the probability of the two things happening is. So let me go ahead and do the problem. Okay, so in a deck of 52 cards, what is the probability of getting a heart and then the queen of spades without replacement? So notice it said without replacement, so these are dependent events. So first things first, you would find your first probability. So in a deck of 52 cards, what's the probability of giving a heart? So um, some of you will kind of know this and have this memorized, and others of you won't. If you forget how many of each suit there are in a deck of cards, that's totally fine. All it is is 52 total cards divided by 4, because there's 4 suits, and then I'll give you the 13 cards of each suit. So you have 13 over 52. That's the probability of getting a heart. And then you're going to multiply that by the probability of getting the queen of spades. So there is only one queen of spades in a deck of 52 cards. And then the bottom isn't going to be 52. It's going to be 51 because I already took away one card, which was one of the hearts. We don't know which one. So then all you have to do is just multiply these together. So... 1 times 13 is 13, and then 52 times 51 would be 2,652. Since the top is a prime, that is as simple as that answer gets. Okay. And then the last little thing uh, to help you guys with probability is the easy way to remember why you multiply probabilities, because a lot of times I get asked, um, you know, why don't why don't I add them? It would make sense to add them, wouldn't it? So here's the easy trick. Um, this is even easier for those of you who have siblings, especially if they're of different genders than you are. But if you don't, you can just pick a person in your life that has siblings. So uh, let's say that you have a sister or a brother. Okay, and let's say they're younger than you, just for argument's sake. So the probability of your let's just say sister of being a girl was one half. And then the probability of you being a girl or a boy was one half. And um, let's say if there's a third, an older brother or sister, the probability is one half for them being a girl. 
So this will work no matter what genders you're using. I'm just going to pick some random ones just so that it's a little bit easier to explain. So let's say that um, I'm a girl and I'm the youngest, which actually is true. So I'm um, one half probability of me being a girl. Then when my sister was born, um, there was a one half probability of her being a girl. Then, let's just pretend I have a third sister, there would have been a one-half probability of her being a girl as well. So if you add these up together, then you suddenly have a 3 over 2 probability of having a girl. And that doesn't make sense because you can't have a probability over 100%. Uh, this is especially funny if, you know, you happen to be a boy. So if you have two younger sisters and you're a boy, or you have two younger brothers and you're a girl, because then there's this huge overwhelming probability that you are going to be not the sex that you are. So it's a good way of describing it. Um, but if we realize that's wrong, get rid of that, and we have one half times one half times one half, then suddenly our probability is going to make a lot more sense. It's one over eight. So that makes more sense because you, you want it to be fairly rare to have three girls or three boys in a row, logically. Okay, guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. And we'll go ahead and cover coordinate geometry next.